I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to this Frame Relay video practice exam for CCNA and CSENT candidates primarily, but you CCNP candidates can always use a little bit of a refresher on this topic as well. I think I've been a little too easy on the group with some of the other exams, so today we're going to have some more multiple choice questions where there's more than one correct answer, but I'm not going to tell you how many are correct. And we've also got some short answer questions here as well. Also want to remind you about some free frame relay webinars and some other topics too, including ether channels coming up. And you can check that schedule out and register at www.thebryantadvantage.com slash ccnawebinars.htm. Lots of great free stuff coming out there. And these 45 minute to 60 minute webinars have been very popular. You can come on out to that page, check out the schedule and register. And frame relay is one of those topics, and it's also the topic of our exam today. So let's get started here with question one. Your frame relay provider is guaranteeing you a certain amount of bandwidth that will be available to you at any given time. What acronym is typically used to describe that guaranteed bandwidth? Frame relay has a lot of acronyms, and you're not even seeing them all in your CCNA studies yet. But we need to know that particular acronym. Here's another acronym, but the DTE and DCE we're a little more familiar with. But the term frame relay cloud, what makes up a frame relay cloud? Do we have frame relay switches? Do we have routers in there? Are they acting as DCEs or DTEs? Exactly what do we have in a frame relay cloud? Also, tell me which of these terms describes frame relay overall. Again, we'll go through the questions fairly rapidly, so feel free to pause it if you need just a few more seconds. What message types serve as keep alives between our DTE and our DCE? There's a keep alive there where if we don't see one for a certain amount of time, the line protocol is going to go down. Which message type is that? Here's a short answer question for you. What is the default encapsulation type of a Cisco router serial interface? You should know this one right off the bat, really should. What is that? Another short answer for you, when LMI AutoSense is in effect, what message type or types does the DTE send to the DCE originally? Let me throw that in for you, originally. Question seven, when LMI AutoSense is in effect, what message types does the DCE send in response to the DTE. So question six is when LMI AutoSense first starts up, what message or messages are going to be sent by the DTE? And then in question seven we're asking what the DCE will do in response. Question eight, what command resulted in this output? A lot of clues in there and a couple things that are even highlighted, but what command resulted in that particular output? Same question here. What command results in this output? Got a DTE down. That doesn't sound good. And then finally, another one we should know immediately. We don't need multiple choice for this one. What protocol enables dynamic frame relay mapping? What makes that happen? So let's go back through the questions here. Uh, the one we're looking for here is the committed information rate, the CIR. Now the DE, LMI, Beckon, and Fecken, you should be familiar with those for your CCNA exam uh, and your CSENT exam as well, but here we're looking for the CIR. A frame relay cloud consists of frame relay switches and those are DCEs. Frame relay is a packet switching protocol and one major advantage of frame relay is its cost. It is relatively inexpensive when compared to other connectivity methods. We say that instead of saying it's cheap. Uh, number four, uh, here we're looking for the local management interface, the LMI. It sounds like some kind of GUI, but it's actually a kind of message that's going to be sent between our DTE and our DCE. Question five, this is HDLC. It is not frame relay, and you can verify this by running the show interface serial zero command as well. But again, the default encapsulation type is HDLC. Now here for questions six and seven, when LMI AutoSense first starts up, the DTE is gonna send three LMI status messages. 
one for Q933A, one for ANSI, and one for Cisco. And then the DCE will respond only with the LMI type it's configured to use. And then, of course, the router and switch begin to just exchange LMI messages of the same type. But originally, the DTE sends three LMI status messages, one of each kind. And the switch, then, the DCE will respond with only the LMI it's configured to use. This particular command, this is show frame LMI. And this is a great place to start with troubleshooting. You don't have to be knowledgeable of every field in here yet but it would really help to watch those three that I have in bold, especially if your timeouts start incrementing. We want the inquiries sent and the messages received to increment. We don't want the timeouts to increment. If they do, we're soon going to have a problem. And that's when we might start running debug frame LMI, which is what the command that resulted in this output. Finally, what protocol enables dynamic frame relay mapping? It's inverse ARP. Uh, it's typically turned off in today's networks and you do that at the interface level with the no frame relay inverse ARP command. Hope you enjoyed this particular video practice exam. Plenty more of them here on YouTube and on my website. And again, please come out and visit the website and register for these free webinars we've got coming up on frame relay and other important CCNA and CCNP exam topics. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you at the webinars.